For any of us following bird migration or watching backyard birds or hosting nesting birds, when there's a report of a hurricane making landfall in the U.S., we get nervous. How are the birds going to do? Uh, will they survive? Will nests survive? Will birds be blown off course? And what about migrating hummingbirds preparing to uh, cross the Gulf of Mexico? Will they make it? Now, for those of you who are going through a hurricane or you just went through one, I, you are in survival mode. This is probably very low on your list of priorities. You know, you're just trying to make sure you're getting your stuff off the ground, uh, securing your house as best you can, and then fighting gas stations and traffic if you're trying to evacuate. But for the rest of us out there who are seeing something in the news about a hurricane coming or you're watching the aftermath on the news and you're concerned, I'm going to share some of the ways birds, especially migrating birds, survive hurricanes. First of all, when it comes to hurricanes, there are two categories of impact for birds, direct and indirect. Direct is what we're usually more concerned with immediately, and that's what happens to birds as the hurricane is coming through. Indirect effects are how birds are affected by the aftermath, and both are concerning. And the way hurricanes impact birds isn't always about fatalities. Sometimes it's shifts in behavior or geographical displacement. I have a video coming out about how hurricanes affect birds, and it does get really interesting. So once it's ready, it'll be in the description for you. As far as how birds survive hurricanes, I'm mainly going to be talking about how they survive the direct impact, but some of this is transferable to surviving the aftermath effects, or it at least prevents them from having to deal with the aftermath. I found five primary ways birds survive the direct effects, but I do wanna be really clear about this. Birds are well adapted to nature and what gets thrown their way, and they have amazing instincts. But even with these five survival tools, fatalities happen. Um, but this can reassure us a little bit that it's probably not going <laughs> to obliterate every bird in its path, and in most cases, a species or population will persist. So the first way birds survive hurricanes and storms is by detecting storms long before they come. And this is especially helpful for migrating birds. There are a few ways birds can detect storms before they arrive. The first is probably what we've maybe heard people say or talk about before, and that's by detecting changes in atmospheric pressure. Birds are extremely sensitive to even small changes in pressure. Researchers aren't exactly sure how birds detect pressure changes, but some think it might have something to do with inner ear sensitivity. The next way birds can detect the storm before it comes is really, really interesting, or at least to me anyway, and that's through infrasound. This is sound waves at such a low frequency that we humans can't really perceive it, but the birds can. not Natural infrasound comes from several major events such as earthquakes, volcanoes, ocean waves pounding, and bad storms. Research from UC Berkeley reported infrasound as a signal for migrating birds to evacuate. They noticed this while observing golden-winged warblers in Tennessee just up and leaving their breeding grounds and heading south to the Gulf. This happened just one or two days before a major, major storm hit the area. The thing is, that supercell was like 250 or 260 miles away when the birds left the area. That distance did suggest to researchers that the storm was way too far for atmospheric pressure or wind or temperature changes to tell the birds that it was time to leave. There have been other studies on infrasound affecting birds. For instance, a researcher found that the infrasound from Concord Plains interfered with homing pigeons doing what they do best finding their way home. And that's because, or at least researchers think this happened, because homing pigeons are thought to use infrasound to actually help them navigate. So in this instance, a naturally produced infrasound disrupted that sound navigation system that they have. Aside from pressure and sound sensitivity, humidity, temperature changes, and wind changes are also signals to birds that help them detect that a storm is coming. So once they've detected a storm, birds can flee the area to avoid it. But what happens if they're migrating? Well, birds can also alter their course, and this happens a lot for those flying over the Gulf of Mexico, or anywhere really. There are definitely some risks, especially for birds doing this massive water crossing. Primarily, it's running out of food stores if they get caught up. 
For hummingbirds, they usually only have just enough fat stored because, you know, they can't weigh too much, but they have enough to, to carry them over the Gulf. The good news is that even though hurricanes are huge, by comparison, the Gulf of Mexico is a lot bigger. So they can alter their flight course a little bit or even just go by land in order to avoid the thick of it. By the way, if you're interested in other ways hummingbirds survive that long, nonstop flight across the Gulf of Mexico, I have a video on that and I'll link that below for you. The next method for survival, which tends to be more critical for migrating birds, is using stopover sites and shifting to other stopover Oversights. A stopover site is sort of like a rest stop or hotel for birds. When birds are migrating, they're usually not just flying and then stopping for the night and then continuing on the very next day. I mean, they are sometimes doing that, but they're also sometimes uh, finding good habitats along the way where they can rest for a few days, shelter, and refuel. When a storm is brewing, they may decide to wait it out at that stopover site, especially if it's far enough away. Once there's better weather, they can pick up and start again. But something else that can happen is if there is a sense that something isn't quite right about a stopover site along the route, or I guess as they're going along, something isn't right, say they sense that infrasound or changes in pressure, many researchers have found that birds will alter where they stop over. This was shown at one site in Louisiana during Hurricane Katrina, where the number of migrating birds at a stopover site had really, really declined. And no, it wasn't because they all died. Researchers at another stopover site in an area that was fairly nearby but not as affected had seen considerable increase in migratory birds. So the birds had anticipated or detected the storm and chose to avoid the regular site for another habitat. Unfortunately, this doesn't always happen. Birds and wildlife still get caught up in storms. In 1993, storms in Louisiana led to a tornado that killed about 40,000 birds. Many were migrating birds, but this situation was a tornado and those do spring up a lot quicker than hurricanes. And because they do come up so quick, it can be harder for birds to avoid them or sense them quick enough to get away. So that brings me to things birds can do when they are stuck in the thick of it. And the first thing is just hunkering down and finding good shelter. This could be in tree holes and brush. It doesn't completely save them. During hurricanes, trees are just uprooted, limbs are broken, vegetation is stripped, but it's still a place to hide. And if they're more on the outskirts of a hurricane, this can definitely shield some birds from rain and potential hypothermia. Tree hole roosting though, uh, is really something that would only apply to cavity birds. So your woodpeckers, chickadees, tree swallows, bluebirds, those types of species. Not so much your robins, cardinals, blue jays, or finches. Interestingly though, birds can change their roosting and foraging behavior and get a little strategic about it when it comes to storms. During Hu Hurricane Hugo, certain birds were observed perching on the ground or nearer the ground rather than in trees where they normally would, and that would have been a little more dangerous for them to be during a hurricane. And some birds were seen perching on the leeward side of buildings, basically using those buildings as a windbreak to protect them. So far, you're probably seeing that birds are just really smart and they just have a way of figuring things out and surviving, which is just kind of reassuring when we see footage after a really bad storm. The next thing that birds do to survive a hurricane, which is something I wouldn't have ever thought of, but once I learned about this, it just made sense. But that is when they sense a storm approaching, Many researchers have observed birds eating way more than usual. If you've ever been through a hurricane, then you know the drill. Uh, you go to the store and hope <laughs> to be able to stock up on the essentials. So bread, canned food, things that won't spoil, water, and uh, toilet paper if you were lucky. It's the same with birds in a way, because they know it's coming, they eat a lot, and in doing so, they're building up their fat reserves so their body can tap into that for energy if there are days without food in the aftermath of a hurricane or really bad storm. When it comes to survival, birds aren't using just one thing, avoidance, sheltering, flight course, uh, storm detection, changing behavior, storing up fat. These are all tools really, and birds use them in combination to help them survive. Even after the direct threat of a storm though, birds face another challenge, which is the aftermath. 
When a hurricane is really bad, it can wipe out habitat, it can alter migration, it can even completely halt migration. To really learn more about what birds face during the aftermath, again, I have that other video coming out, um, or maybe it'll be out by the time you're watching, and it goes into a lot more detail about this. It, and it's really interesting too. With all of this in mind, there are still things you can do to help them survive and thrive. The most immediate thing we can do is consider our own backyard like a stopover site, even if it is a small backyard. The goal is not just to feed birds with seed, but to create habitat. And you don't have to be in the wake of a hurricane to help. With birds altering course and habitat potentially being lost, your contribution could be a lifesaver. A simple way to build habitat is planting native plants that host native insects and then provide natural food and coverage for birds. Next, if you are feeding birds, find good seed blends that have sunflower, peanuts, safflower, pumpkin seed, cranberries, things like that. Avoid blends with filler like millet, milo, and cracked corn. And sadly, these are going to be a lot of your generic blends out there. Um, put out nectar feeders for hummingbirds. Even if it's late in the season, you can help stragglers who might hang around to avoid storms. Just remember to avoid red dye, use four parts water to one part sugar, and keep your feeders fresh and clean. Change them every day, or if it's cooler, every other day. Bird baths are also great, just make sure to keep them fresh and clean. Finally, if you found an injured bird, call a licensed rehabber to help. Please don't try to attempt to mend an animal on your own. I've seen some not so good outcomes as a result, so it's best to just have a professional do it. But going out and discovering an injured animal and getting it to the right place is another awesome way you can help these birds.